Hello everyone, and welcome back to the channel. We go behind the scenes to see how Doritos are made, as well as an insight into the special techniques used in producing these maize flour chips. Have you ever wondered where the idea of chips came from? I'm sure the history can be traced back several centuries, if not longer, but whoever came up with the idea must have been a genius. Today, chips have become so popular that many are homemade or made from various food products, such as plantains, sweet potatoes, maize flour, etc. Of all the different kinds of chips out there, Doritos is one of the most popular and unique chip brands of all time. However, I bet you do not know what it takes to make this delightful crunchy snack. Doritos, which literally means fried and golden thing, was established in the mid-1960s, long before most of us were even born. However, they are well known for their interesting advertisements at the Super Bowl, the signature triangle or shape of the chips, the wide varieties available, and the great taste of each one. When the chips were launched for the first time, the only flavor available was the original plain, with no sweeteners, colorings, or flavorings. Even though the chips are made slightly different now, they are still made using the same rudimentary recipe. The basic ingredients used to produce Doritos chips are ground maize, vegetable oil, and salt. However, these have been built upon to create more flavors. Today, Doritos chips are available in over 10 flavors, which are made using additional flavor-rich ingredients like cheddar cheese, buttermilk, proteins, soybean, natural and artificial flavorings, sugar, garlic powder, red and green bell peppers, etc. Now that we have an idea of what they are made with, let us get right into the process of producing these flavorful crunchy triangles. At the beginning of their cycle, Doritos are ordinary maize grains. Since Doritos is the largest chip manufacturer in the US, just imagine how many maize cobs are harvested for these chips daily production. The amount is insane, and because of this, the company has a couple of maize plantations worldwide. Every week large trucks are loaded with heaps of maize and sent to the factory, where they are converted from boring seeds to tasty snacks. First, the maize cobs are removed from their sheath through a process called dehusking, done by an automated dehusking machine that can handle thousands of mazes per time. As their husks are being removed, the machine also removes most of the maize silk before moving to the next step. Next, the dehusked maize cobs are moved to another machine called the maize sheller, which separates the grains from the cobs. This machine is operated by a factory worker who monitors the speed and efficiency of the machine to ensure that the grains are not wasted in the process. After being shelled, the maize grains are passed through a set of screens that filter out most of the dirt and shaft trapped after the processes of dehusking and shelling. This controls the number of impurities present in the next step, boiling. The grains are poured into huge boiling kettles, where they are boiled for at least 20 minutes for two reasons. First, to soften the grains, and second, to allow them to absorb moisture which is important in the dough making phase. Pre-measured quantities of lime are also added as the grains are boiling, which serves antibacterial functions and enhances the taste of the maize. The lime also softens each grain's hard external layer to allow moisture to penetrate the seeds properly. After boiling the maize grains for a specified period, they are removed from the boiling kettle and rinsed thoroughly. After rinsing, they are poured into huge tanks where they are soaked in water again for about 12 hours. This is done to increase the moisture content of the grains from 15% to 45%, ensuring that the dough made from the grains has the desired paste-like texture rather than a powdery one. When the soaking is over, a pumping system pumps the maize water mixture from these tanks and passes it through a screen, thus separating the water from the soft hydrated grains. From the screen, the grains are carried to tumblers, where they are spun and sprayed with water to blow off their outer coverings. This part of the maze is gotten rid of because if left to undergo the production process, its rough texture will eventually affect the smoothness of the dough and the chips. Next, a conveyor system transports the maze from the tumbler to the grinding machine, where what is left of the maize grains is crushed until a thick paste called masa is formed. The masa is squeezed out of the grinder through a flat, triangular nozzle which shapes it into a thin sheet. These flat masa sheets are then passed through a machine that cuts them into small triangles, and they are all mechanically arranged on a steel conveyor which carries them into the oven. Before they get to the oven, the triangular doughs are inspected by factory workers who ensure that the oddly shaped ones are removed. 
and any dough that is not properly placed on the conveyor is repositioned. After the inspection, the doughs finally enter the oven, which has been preheated to a temperature of 340 degrees Celsius, and they spent just 16 seconds inside. Since the triangles were cut into thin pieces, it wouldn't take long for them to cook. However, the short oven time and high heat combination are aimed at drying up the triangles to turn them into dried Doritos. At the same time, the 16 seconds they spend in the oven allow tiny pockets of moisture to be trapped in the triangles, thus creating the blisters that give Doritos their signature bumpy texture. From the oven, a conveyor belt transports the triangles to the fryer, where they fry in corn oil for just 55 seconds before they finally become chips. The purpose of frying after baking is to give the Doritos their signature crispy and crunchy texture. When the frying time is over, a mesh conveyor belt scoops the chips out of the oil into another mesh conveyor, which allows all the excess oil to drain back into the fryer. Next, the chips are left to cool for a few minutes before they are flavored. To make the best-selling Doritos, can you guess which ones? Nacho cheese, that's right. The bland chips are arranged on a flat surface, where they mix with the pre-made nacho cheese seasonings. This seasoning combination includes a mix of powdered cheddar, romano, and Parmesan cheeses, salt, monosodium glutamate, whey, onion powder, garlic powder, and a bunch of artificial flavorings, all of which are mixed in a tumbler. Next, a sprinkler sprays the chips with corn oil before mixing them with the nacho seasoning. Otherwise, the seasoning wouldn't stick to the individual chips. After being flavored, the chips are transported to the packaging area, and the rest of the work is done by the different packaging machines. But first, chips from each batch of flavoring are inspected and judged based on their taste, greasiness, appearance, and texture. The batches that fall short of the company's standards are discarded, while the good ones proceed to the packaging area. All the packaging machines work at once, and they start by prepping the branded nylon bags to pack the chips. Then they measure the chips, feed each portion into a bag, seal it immediately using heat, and transport each bag to a conveyor belt. From this conveyor belt, the packaged Doritos are taken to an area where they are manually packaged into bigger boxes, which are either stored in warehouses or loaded on transport vehicles. About 8 million bags of Doritos are made worldwide daily, meaning roughly 3 billion bags are made every year. The company's estimated average yearly profit is $45 billion, and with the steady increase in sales, it will only get richer. So there you have it. Doritos are not so complicated to make, from maize grains to tasty triangular chips. Would you be down to make some DIY Doritos? I've done it, and they are delicioso! Leave your answer in the comment section below.